Hey there everybody, Mr. Mark with you. Um, let's demonstrate what it looks like to be moving on the microscopic level. Before you, you see a beaker of water, and this is water at zero degrees Celsius. In fact, I'm going to fish this little piece of ice out of there real quick. Um, and then next to it, coming off the hot plate right behind the camera, is going to be another beaker with hot water. So this water is just about boiling. And so its temperature is 100 degrees Celsius, give or take. Um, and it's a little bit closer than the other one, just so that they kind of fit together. So let me adjust that real quick. So what I'm going to do to demonstrate how the atoms and molecules inside each beaker are moving differently is I'm going to drop in some food coloring. And I've got two things of food coloring, and they're identical to each other. And so I'm going to drop them in simultaneously, and then your job is to kind of observe and see what happens. How does the motion of the food coloring, which we should see inside the beakers, differ from the cold one on the right to the hot one on the left? So here we go. We'll just do one drop of food coloring. So the first thing you'll notice is that there's a lot more motion going on in the hot beaker compared to the cold beaker. In the hot beaker, most of the food coloring just kind of sank in a trail straight down to the bottom, whereas in the one on the left that's warm, it kind of sank to the bottom and spread out as it did, and it kind of did sort of like a swirling thing almost. And for the most part, with the exception of the very bottom of the beaker, the green food coloring has pretty much diffused throughout the entire beaker. Whereas over here, you can see that it's very, very slowly moving around inside the beaker. And so I'm going to leave this here for a little bit longer. And so maybe we can see some sort of equilibrium reached on the right side. But on the left side, it looks like we're, you know, pretty close, with the exception of the very bottom there, to the food coloring being completely diffused throughout the entire beaker. And so the first thing to understand is that the motion of the food coloring is determined by the motion of the water inside the beaker. So the little water molecules in here are moving around, they're jostling that food coloring, and that's what makes the food coloring move through the beaker. Same thing's going on over here, but the difference is that these water molecules are going slower on average than these water molecules. And so slower motion means less jostling, and the food coloring can more just slide between the water molecules and settle down there at the bottom. And so after about two minutes of waiting, the, the beaker on the left is pretty much uniform. You're, you're going to see a little bit of a color change here, but that's because of the blue um, lab jack underneath it. If I lift this up, you, you can see that green color going all the way through. But the one on the right, all that food coloring for the most part is still collected at the bottom. So lesson number one, we have to be able to envision and understand what's happening to the molecules in something that is quote unquote hot versus cold. And so we're going to do some simulators and kind of see if we can visualize those things. Your goal at the end of doing that is to come back and explain why this one, the food coloring spread out quickly and this one it did not.